a weekend i'm definitely noticing things watching my footage back with my play in modern warfare 2 that are definitely some mistakes that i've been making things that i can do better with that are easily within my control so today i want to share some of my own findings in the hopes that maybe it can perhaps help your play out as well today we're running down the mistakes you may be making and how to correct them in modern warfare 2. as we go along drop your thoughts down below anything you'd add to this list anything that you find yourself doing that you know that you definitely shouldn't but for some reason you keep going back to whatever the case drop it down below but if you enjoy the video you find it add on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on the video and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe we've still got a ton of stuff to cover here and things to discuss in regards to modern warfare 2 and we've got warzone 2 and dmz upcoming in just a bit so if you're part of that over 70 percent of viewers that are not subscribed and like to join the community as we push towards 600,000 subscribers i'd love to have you lofty goal again maybe we'll be able to hit 525,000 before launch of dmz and warzone anyways though love to have you along for the ride and finally today's video is brought to you in part by my friends over at apex gaming pcs but more on them in a bit for now let's start out with some of the things that i definitely think have helped me and corrected my play since launch we're going to start out with some stuff outside of the gameplay itself some a quick rundown of some settings i've been messing around with some class creation stuff and then jumping into in-game tips firstly on the setting side of course just to reiterate once again here since it is the first time we've seen it in a modern warfare game yes we had it in cold war and vanguard but for the modern warfare franchise and infinity war it's offering finding the right fov is something that for the first time you definitely have to bear in mind for me the longest time was a sweet spot of like 109 to 111 but then eventually i just ended up maxing it out to 120 to which that's where i got used to and it's helped out greatly because i can see the entire field of view now that isn't for everybody sometimes that extended field of view and that fisheye effect to your viewpoint can make some people motion sick so find what works for you but that's something that i just wanted to throw in there as a preliminary thing but beyond that i've been playing around with a little bit of my aim response curve type and aim assist type aim response curve type absolutely still highly recommend dynamic again gives you a bit more precise nature there isn't any input delay if we want to call it that and how your thumbsticks will react to your aiming it'll just be immediate and snappy and then aim assist type that's something that as of recently since our settings video i've actually been playing around with the black ops aim assist and it feels a bit snappier it feels a little better than just the default could be placebo but regardless make sure you have one that is comfortable to you try them out in private matches and see what works best for you and what you find most comfortable but absolutely look those over now as for class creation one of the big things that i've definitely noticed in the last week or so here is the sort of trade-offs that you have in weapon categories as a general rule of thumb damage drop off this year seems to be incredibly relevant so you're gonna have to balance your creative class options across a handful of different attributes that you really want to make sure you capitalize on sometimes it's really hard to get all of those things like bullet velocity versus damage range versus recoil control versus ads versus sprint to fire time those are probably the five main attributes and aspects of your creative class that you should be paying attention to in my opinion if you're playing for long range obviously you want to count for things like bullet velocity and damage range but at the same time you also want to make sure that your recoil control is there now if you end up favoring those three things things like your ads and sprint to fire time are likely going to be penalized as a result now if you want something that you can just run and gun and get your gun up quick you're going to want to make sure that you have your ads and sprint to fire speed maxed out something that you have a quicker to fire weapon and bullet velocity and recoil control as well as damage range may fall off at that point so it really comes down to what you want but making sure that you build following those four to five sort of attributes that your weapon can afford you those are the biggest ones here for me perk package selection is also something that's really important this year because not only do we just not have the ability to take three perks any three perks at that point you kind of have to couple them up and group them together but also one thing you may notice is you only have the ability to have five custom perk packages so you got to be a little bit more conscious of what you're actually putting in those packages and seeing how it fits your play style crafting those perk packages for what you may do most or do best and then finally before jumping into your game streak selection make sure that you end up using stuff that can obviously help you out the most in game but also be conscious of the fact that some maps just aren't good for some streaks for example the chopper gunner on hotel not a great choice now moving on over into the in-game stuff here we got a bunch of stuff we can talk about that i think that i've picked up that i've at least been making mistakes on and i'm trying to correct firstly rushing headfirst into engagements i'm somebody that loves to just get into the action really just rack up as many kills as possible but in this game well sprinting into gunfights it's gonna get you killed you got to slow the pace down a bit, unfortunately, and that's just due in part simply to things like the TTK. With it being so quick across the entire weaponry selection in the game, chances are a lot of the engagements you'll encounter are people pre-aiming corners, having their gun up, and it really comes down to you being the most ready that you possibly can for those engagements. Unfortunately, with as fast a TTK as we have now, it really doesn't reward so much accuracy in a gunfight where you can maybe turn on a dime or turn counterfire and get those kills as much as you could in, say, 
Black Ops 4, where the TTK was honestly the exact polar opposite of where we are here. It was a bit too slow, but point stands. You gotta slow down the pacing here a bit, get ready for those gunfights a little further, and not go Leroy Jenkins on everything as much. Now, before we jump into the rest of the mistakes here that myself and maybe you have been making as well, I want to let you guys know about my friends over at Apex Gaming PCs. If you're interested in a new PC build, I'd recommend checking them out. They're a performance-based build company that can offer any number of pre-built systems or the ability to fully custom tailor your own. Myself, I just ordered my own through them, decided to lean into the AMD 7950X CPU for a bit more balance in that work and gaming flow of both rendering and editing videos at a bit lower CPU temps, though honestly you can't go wrong with either. Checking the specs for both AMD's new CPUs and the 13th gen Intel. Also, I grabbed an ROG Strix 4090 to keep the 4K videos here on the channel at as best a quality as possible. So if you're interested in learning more, do me a favor and check the link in the description below where you can find three tiers of PCs for the community that they build out, those of which can all be upgraded. And of course, now will include the 40 series GPUs, new Ryzen 7 7000 series CPUs and the Intel 13th gen CPUs as well. In addition to that, Code Espresso might actually still be boosted to 15% off if you want to take advantage of some of the new inventories coming in and get yourself either a new system or just some hardware that you can upgrade your systems with. So thanks again to Apex Gaming PCs for sponsoring the video. But back to it, crosshair centering is the next big thing that I have kind of slipped back into some old habits with. Crosshair centering, for those that don't know, is essentially just having your crosshairs where you want to aim. A lot of the times, though, in terms of Call of Duty, one of the big things that I've seen in terms of just public matches and seeing how myself and other people will play is that they don't have that crosshair at the point in which they should. A lot of the times they'll have it way lower so that they can see the peripheral vision of what's in front of them, having a little bit more view of directly at their feet, which really isn't necessary, but it is something that we just kind of, again, go back to those old habits. So the gun is by default down by where you want to be aiming. So if you can adjust that, have that crosshair at chest height when walking or sprinting around, you're gonna have a much better chance of being accurate coming into those gunfights as soon as they happen. So as we'll talk about here in a second, strafing is actually something that's incredibly slow within this game. So if you end up, say, walking around a corner in a hip fire position, but then you have that crosshair where you want it to be, you can quickly snap onto where your enemy is, which may give you a better opportunity to end up winning that gunfight. But crosshair centering and placement is always something that's been important, but absolutely in this game, again, with how quick it is to kill, make sure that you're working on that so you're giving yourself as best an opportunity to win gunfights. Now, again, coming back to it, don't slow peek. This is something that we've been able to do in the past but this year in particular, it's not that great. Strafing is kind of abysmal in this game. So if you peek a corner, if someone's watching that angle, you're essentially reverse cameraing them. They can see you the entire time in your character model, that body popping out, but you can't see around that corner and see them. So you give yourself a massive disadvantage. Slow peeking in this game, not the way that you want to be able to secure kills or improve. Instead, if you can deal with it, jumping around corners does help. Yes, I know a lot of people do hate to hear that, but truly that's what gives you the best advantage. It gives you that sort of peeker's advantage as it's been called in the past. So that's something to consider consider as opposed to slow peeking. Now, the next mistake is disregarding your minimap and not using the information at hand to your advantage. Yes, we don't have dots on it this year, but it is something that as we talked about in our main tips video, if you can see there's a bunch of different open space on your map, chances are there's enemies around there. If you're clustered up with a couple of your teammates, enemies likely won't be there. Maybe there's one that's kind of dodging and weaving in and out of where your team may be, but if you see four to five other teammates on your minimap right with you, well, chances are the entire team isn't going to be right there that you turn a corner and get blasted by two to three people. So make sure that you're at least having that awareness in game to take advantage of those cues that it ends up giving you. Beyond that, another Another mistake that honestly I just made that I kind of hate myself for it took extra time to make up for it was if you're a camo grinder if you're leveling up every single weapon do your launchers early and often do them in conjunction with whatever primary you're using whatever you're ranking up because if you save them to last they're just going to be an absolute pain me I'm finishing up all of my levels here and might actually have a new guide coming as of tomorrow for a full comprehensive way to level up all your weapons myself now completing and leveling up all of my weapons entirely but one of the last categories that I had here truly the last two were launchers and pistols, which unfortunately without the ability to have an underkill perk within Modern Warfare 2, you can't work on both pistols and launchers at the same time. So not only wanted I make it more tedious for myself by not allowing myself to simultaneously knock out two birds with one stone, but also I saved perhaps probably the most tedious one for last, that being the launchers. Those, while we don't have a lot of challenges associated with it once you've reached level 11 and the first camo challenge unlocked before gold, that is essentially still a problem though, because you have to get it to level 11. So shoot down streaks, kill enemies with the launchers while you're doing other stuff, don't just save them for a little bit later. Beyond that, the only other mistake that I can think of that I've had is, well, 
playing solo. We've talked about it before that Call of Duty the last couple of years has really not been a kind game to solo gamers, especially if you're on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of where your skill may lie in terms of overall global ranking. But playing solo severely limits yourself. Not only one, because you open up the matchmaking to much more parameters that could work against you. Higher skilled players, if you're playing against the team, chances are when it gets to lobby matchmaking, if you're in the upper portion of that lobby selection in terms of stats and skill, because of the way the matchmaking will work and it won't probably put a four to five man team with you, you'll end up getting some of the bottom percentage of that lobby pool. And therefore, it's an uphill battle the entire way. You got to combat teammates that are calling out to each other while also doing basically everything yourself. So playing solo has always been one of the banes of my existence the last couple of years, especially since this matchmaking system has been implemented. So if you can at all, absolutely try and avoid that and play with a party. I know that for some people it's not possible, but if it is, give it a shot, try it out. And honestly, you'll probably just enjoy the time more anyways, because you'll be talking with some friends and be not focusing as much on if you're dying over and over again. But beyond that, that is the stuff that I've picked out here for my own gameplay and that maybe even can help you out. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is there any mistake that you find yourself making within Modern Warfare 2 that you can easily correct? Feel free to drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 2. We've still got so much upcoming, of course, and a little later on down the road, just in under two weeks, Warzone 2 and DMZ is coming around. So stick around here on the channel if you want to stay up to date with all of that. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Honest Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.